Hello and welcome. This is Scott at Mechsoft, and in this brief video, I will take you through the steps to download and install Mechsoft CNC programming system with FreeMill, and then show you a brief demonstration on how to use it. As the name suggests, FreeMill is completely free and without usage restriction, meaning there is no cost, no time limit, no license, no file output size limit, so you can use it as long as you would like to program your CNC machine. Being free, it is also restricted to one very useful cut method. FreeMill is also supported by approximately 250 CNC post processors that are included with the system. If you're unfamiliar with FreeMill's capabilities, you may want to watch this entire video first to understand its ease of use and machining application. There are two important facts that you need to understand before we go through the installation process of FreeMill. One, the Mechsoft CAM products are built on a plug-in technology, which means they require a host CAD system to run. Secondly, today the Mechsoft CAM system is available as a plug-in to Visual CAD, Rhinoceros, SolidWorks, and Geomagic Design. FreeMill is actually integrated into each of the four of these CAM products offered by Mechsoft and is just a free subset of the full CAM system. So, in this video, we will install FreeMail by installing Visual CAD CAM. If you're interested in one of the other three CAM plugins, you first need to install Rhino or SolidWorks or Geomagic Design. Then you can install and evaluate the appropriate Mechsoft CAM plugin and use FreeMail there. So, let's get started. To download and install FreeMail, go to the Mechsoft website, mechsoft.com. Then select the Downloads button on the menu bar, then select Download Demos. On this next page, please enter your name and other requested information, including your product of interest. We want this so we can call you after the installation and see how it went and if you have any questions about the product. When you select the Submit button, Mechsoft will automatically return an email with a link that allows you to download the CAM product, which includes free mail. You should receive this email within 15 to 30 minutes. The link will take you to the Download Demo Products page. Here you need to choose which one of the four Mechsoft CAM products you wish to download and install. And they're listed on the left here. There are two things to keep in mind. One is that all four of these CAM products include FreeMail. And second, options 2, 3, and 4 require that you install a third-party CAD system prior to installing the Mechsoft CAM system. We've added FreeMail to the bottom of the list, primarily for those people who are looking for the product FreeMail by name. If you choose FreeMail, it's the same as choosing Visual CAD CAM 2014. Next, you need to choose whether you want the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version of the software to match the architecture of your computer. After you've decided that, select the button for download and download the product. If the system asks whether you want to run or save the download, I would suggest that you save it, which will deposit it in your download directory. If you choose to save the download, Wait till the download is complete, then go to the download directory and look for the Visual CAD CAM installer that was just created. Now you're ready to install the software. Double click on the Visual CAD CAM installer file name. You may or may not get a notification that prerequisites still need to be installed. If you do get this notification, complete the installation of those prerequisites. At this point, we'll follow through the setup wizard to install Visual CAD CAM. Select Next. Here you can read and review the end user license agreement. You must accept the terms in order to proceed. Then select Next. At this panel, you're given the opportunity to read the installer readme file. To proceed on, select Next. Here you can accept or change the destination directory for the installed software. Then select Next. Finally, select the Install button. At this panel, select the Finish button to complete the software installation. A single Visual CAD CAM icon will be placed on your desktop. 
To run FreeMail, double-click on the MacSoft icon on your desktop. This panel explains that VisualCam did not detect a licensed security key plugged into your system. This means that you will have access to all the other MechSoft Cam products for your evaluation, but that they will run in demo mode and will be restricted. It also explains that you can run FreeMail, which will be unrestricted, and will allow you to generate toolpaths and post-process them to run your CNC machine in the shop. Select OK to proceed. This panel shows all of the MechSoft Cam products that you will have access to, but we want free mail, so select that and then select OK. First, the help file comes up, which you can minimize and refer to later, and then Visual Cam with free mail comes up. So, right now, let me give you a brief demonstration of free mail and its capabilities so you'll know how it works. The first thing that I need is uh, a part model or some geometry to machine. Now, you can create that geometry right here in your host CAD system. But for this demonstration, I'd like to import a model that has already been created and saved in the step format. To do this, I go to File, Open, select that step file, and the system will read the step file through the translator and bring that model into my current Visual CAD system. With the part model loaded, I'll choose Visual Cam or RhinoCam, as the case may be, on the top menu bar, and then FreeMill on the pull-down. And the FreeMill wizard comes up on the left of your screen. The wizard is designed as a series of simple steps that will walk you through the process of creating a machining operation, then generating a toolpath, simulating that toolpath, and then post-processing that to create a file that will go out on your machine to cut the part. All right, in the first step of the wizard, I need to define the axis or orientation of the cutter while cutting the part. One way to do that is to align it with one of the principal axes of the world coordinate system. The world coordinate system is a fixed, immovable coordinate system that exists in the 3D part space, and you can see it in each of the views on the screen. But the world coordinate system is for reference only. It does not directly control the output of the tool path. For illustration purposes, if I were to pick one of the other options, you will clearly see another coordinate system that exists, and this coordinate system does directly control the output of the tool path and is called the machine coordinate system. The goal then of this step in the wizard is not only to align the z-axis of the machine coordinate system with the spindle of the machine, but also to orient the X and Y axis parallel to the axis of the machine tool. This part will be mounted on the table of a vertical spindle three-axis mill. That means that I want the Z axis of the machine coordinate system straight up towards the spindle of the machine, the X axis towards the right, and the Y axis towards the back, which happens to be the same as the world Z. This is then the correct orientation for the machine coordinate system for my part and this setup. The next step in the wizard is to define the stock material or the workpiece that the part will be made from. The system scans the part geometry on the screen and creates a minimum box that it uses as the stock material. And you can see the size here. Down below, you can enter values if you wish to enlarge or grow that box, but you cannot put in values that will reduce the box smaller than the geometry of the part. With the stock material defined, I'm going to go to the next step in the wizard and define the program origin or work zero. Here I can use any pick point in the screen, but I'm going to choose set to stock box. I'm going to locate this part against two locating pins on the back side of the stock material and one stop pin against the left side. Therefore, the natural place for me to put the origin or program zero is at the back left corner, which is northwest. And I want to locate it in height three inches above the bottom of the part, which happens to be at the top of the material. So I'm going to use the highest Z. This moves the machine coordinate system to that position, 
and all output in your toolpath will come out relative to that origin being zero and according to the axes of the coordinate system. Next I will define the cutting tool. Free mill supports straight ball mill, flat end mill, and a radius end mill, sometimes called a bowl mill. I'm going to use a ball mill and the parameters are shown which affect the size of the cutter and holder. The next step is to define some basic feeds and speeds and a spindle RPM, cut feed, engage feed rate, and a retract feed rate as shown in the diagram. With those parameters set, we're ready to generate the machining operation. Free mill produces one kind of operation, parallel finishing cuts across the face of the part. Each pass is separated from the adjacent pass by a step over distance, which defaults to 50 thousandths, and I'll leave it at that. And the other parameter that we need to set is what direction are those passes, either along X or along Y. And I will choose along X. So let's generate the operation and the path. There's the tool path. Let's simulate that in the stock material that we've specified. And there is the cutting shown in that stock material. Finally, let's post-process the tool path. Post-processing converts the generic or universal tool path into machine-specific codes to be run on a particular machine. Freemail supports over 200 existing post-processors. I have chosen the Haas machine, so let's execute that post. I'll now specify a file name for the output to be saved under, and in just a few moments you'll see the post-processed listing of the G-codes and M-codes for that Haas machine. And here they are. And if you look down through here, you can examine it and see that the z-axis values are negative. We would expect that because we place the work zero or origin at the top of the material, so all cutting would be negative. Well, that's it. Thank you.